Hello everyone. Thank you, Ron. So we are starting on Amazon Bedrock. Security is the topic of the discussion today. As we all know, the field of Gen AI has exploded in last year or two, and it's being looked at by every organization to help with almost every use case that they can think of, they can imagine of. It is a massively exciting field for both developers as well as for the product owners. And it's also a very exciting field for the business. But there is an elephant in the room that is security. To be specific, the security of your data. Most organization, this is the most priced asset they have and they own. I am Murli Shankar a senior solution architect here at AWS. Joining me is Sri Vidya, who is also a solution architect. So in this session, we are going to cover AML offering in AWS and an introduction to Amazon Bedrock. Then we will dive deep into the security aspect of it. So before we start, I want to give a view of overall AWS AI stack. So if you want to build a custom model from the scratch, we provide all the infrastructure and the tools, as you can see in the bottom of this slide. We also provide applications that you can configure and consume with few clicks, like Amazon Q, which is in top of this slide. Then there is Bedrock. You can quickly build and scale your application using foundation model and the ecosystem that we provide you. So overall, if you look at that, we are putting this into three bucket. If you are a provider and you want to create custom model, then you use the tools that is listed in the bottom of the slide here. Or if you are a con consumer, you will consume this as an application. And then there is Bedrock. So today our focus is going to be on Bedrock and its security. So we would like to just give you a quick high level overview of what is Amazon Bedrock. And this isn't going to be a standard service in introduction. We are not going to discuss the specific features. We will be focusing more on the security side. And we are not going to get into the details of specific models. Today we are going to look at that security related aspect of the entire service. That's it. I want to give a quick intro on Amazon Bedrock. It's a fully managed generative AI service that make it easy for customers to build and scale Gen AI application. Customers use it to easily take advantage of the foundation model or FM in short within their application without having to worry about the model deployment, the infrastructure behind it, uh, about the model training, or about the maintenance. They can just consume and start using it. One of our commitment is providing customers with more choice of foundation model through Amazon Bedrock. Choice, that is the keyword here or a crucial point to note. We do not believe one foundation model that can solve every use case, nor that one particular version, flavor, or an FM from a single provider can do all the job that exists today. We have worked on application that have used models from Anthropic, Amazon from our own models, Cohere, and we know categorically that one size does not fit all here. Again, in the Amazon Bedrock, you can customize your model with your own data privately. Nothing feeds your data back to the base model. And you have the tools you need to combine the power of FMs within your organization data and execute the complex tasks. That is the ecosystem what we provide around the system. And all of this with the security and privacy and responsible AI safety, you need to put generative AI into production. That said, I just want to give an overview of of various providers and, and various foundation model that we, we have in Amazon Bedrock. So customers have told us that one of the most important feature of Bedrock is how easy to make it to experiment with, 
select and combine the wide range of foundation model. It is still in the early stages. A lot of things are happening and a lot of changes are, are coming in the generative AI world with very fast. And we are just getting started here. Customers are moving fast. And at the same time, the Gen AI is also evolving quickly with the new option, innovation happening. Practically, if you look at that almost every day and every week. So the customers need to be able to experiment, deploy, iterate and pivot quickly if they need to. And they want to able to choose today's latest and greatest foundation model and to be ready immediately embrace whatever comes tomorrow. That is why we have made building a wide range of FM from various providers with as easy as an API call. Today, Bedrock provides access to a wide range of FM from leaders. This, as you, we have listed some of them here from Meta, Stability, AI, Anthropic, and as well as our own Amazon models. And we also recently added Mistral, you can see on the right top corner of here, and we continue to add more and more foundation model. So the idea is you can quickly experiment. You don't need to rewrite your application. You don't need to rethink about it. It's all simple API call change. If you want, if you find a better model tomorrow, or you want to experiment with a different model. So that's the idea of Bedrock. So that said, we, we want to dive deep into the security and compliance. So I will invite Sri Vidya and hand over from here. Sri. Hi everyone. Thank you for passing over Morali. And I'm gonna talk about security and compliance with Amazon Bedrock. Starting off at AWS, security is our top priority. This means that security is deeply embedded into our culture and our processes. If there's one thing that is absolutely critical to every user on AWS is when they're using their generative AI services is that everything that you do is private and that your data is protected at all times because you are always in control of your data. Next slide, please. So first let's discuss how Amazon Bedrock ensures data privacy and localization. We do not share your inference or customization training data. If you recall from the previous slide with the different foundational models from Meta, Cohere, Entropic, et cetera, none of those providers that we work with will be able to see or access your data on AWS. In similar terms, your data cannot be seen or used by AWS for any purposes. The only data that we can see is operational metrics such as usage data on services for billing purposes. And of course, all customer model data such as prompts, resources, fine-tuned models are all isolated per customer in your VPCs and remain in the AWS region where they are created. Next slide, please. And then in addition to data privacy, Amazon Bedrock also has a robust data security measures in place when you are in control of your data. As common best practices in security is that if it moves, you encrypt it. So all communications to and from within Amazon Bedrock service is always encrypted in transit. We require a TLS 1.2 as a minimum to connect to the Amazon Bedrock APIs. Another best practice is if it doesn't move, also encrypt it. Now, we do recommend that you encrypt your customization training data that is in your Amazon S3 bucket or any customized models with the key management system, KMS keys. So you can use AWS KMS to centrally manage keys to encrypt and decrypt the training data and models with the managed keys. And lastly, if you are familiar, with AWS Identity Access Management, also known as IAM, which is a service that helps you securely control access to the AWS resources. So with IAM, you can manage permissions that control which AWS resources users can access. And we'll dive deeper into IAM a little bit more shortly with Amazon Bedrock. So in addition to the data 
data security measures, Amazon Bedrock also adheres to various compliance standards. Next slide, please. Compliance is a very critical foundation for financial institutions, which enables customers to safeguard sensitive data, mitigate risks, and maintain customer trust, and also unlock new growth opportunities. With the advanced security features and risk management tools and compliance certification, AWS empowers you to embrace compliance as a competitive edge. As of today, here is what is available for Amazon Bedrock starting off with HIPAA eligible. This is the Health Insurance Portability Accountability Act. This is a US federal law that sets standards for protecting your sensitive patient health information, your PHI. Next up, we have GDPR, which is the General Data Protection Regulation that is a data protection regulated by the European Union aimed to strengthening your data, privacy laws all across the EU. Then we have SOC, which is the Service Organization Control. These are reports that provide information about the design and operating effectiveness of an organization's internal controls related to the service offerings. Lastly, we have FedRAMP. This is the Federal Risk and Authorization Management Program, which is a U.S. government-wide program that provides a approach to security assessment, authorization, and also continuous monitoring for your cloud products and services. The difference between the moderate and high is based on the risk the cloud systems and data could be at. For example, with moderate, this covers the use cases such as public facing websites, collaboration tools, and any non-sensitive data processing. While with high FedRAMP, this is intended for systems that are at a higher impact of a data breach or system failure is high. This is also required for any processing, storing, or transmitting sensitive data such as personal identified information, your PII, financial data, or even controlled unclassified information, the CUI. And now that we've looked at Amazon Bedrock's data security and compliance, next slide. Now let's look into the guardrails for Amazon Bedrock. This allows you to implement safeguards for your generative AI applications based on your use cases and with the responsible AI policies. So you can create multiple guardrails that are tailored to different use cases and then apply them across the multiple foundational models that we've shown earlier, providing you a cons consistent user experience and then standardizing the safety and privacy controls. With guardrails, they can be used in multiple ways with the different use cases. For example, a chatbot application. You can use the guardrails to filter harmful user inputs and toxic model responses. For example, curse words or making your application age appropriate content for children. Or even at a call center, the way that you summarize converse conversation transcripts between a user and an agent, you can use guardrails to make sure that the personable identified information, the PII, is protected to the user policies. And then going on into I am. We talked about this a little bit earlier in the presentation about how I am serve is a service that helps you control access into all the AWS resources. But with I am on Amazon Bedrock, you have the flexibility to allow or deny access to specific foundational models and allow only certain people to run those model customization jobs or even block access. On the right-hand side, we have an example of an IAM policy where the customers follow a simple subscription process, which is designed to ensure that you're following best practices on responsibility and authorized usage. So the first step is that customers need to subscribe to a model before using it to build out their application. The subscription process ensures that the customers only have access to the models that they need for their use case. And then access available to the models is controlled by the IAM policies. 
These policies allow customers to specify which models the applications and their users can subscribe to. This granular control ensures that only authorized models are accessible within the organization, roles, or for a particular use case. Lastly, the models can be used with IAM policies that can be fine-tuned. So customers can restrict access to specific models, versions, or even particular capabilities of a model. Now diving deeper into IAM as best practices, you can make sure that the model is access is given to the different user roles to invoke the models. On the left-hand side, this policy right here shows that you can allow access to specific model A. You can see in the effect, it says allow, and in the resource, it says model A. While on the right-hand policy, you can see that this explicitly denies that access to model B. You can see that in effect with deny and then resource with model B. Now, taking a step back from IAM and looking onto the monitoring side of Amazon Bedrock, we have Amazon CloudWatch metrics. These service is what collects raw data and processes it into readable near real-time metrics, such as the number of model innovations on the client and server side, the system throttling input tokens, and even latency. Next slide, please. And then we also have a way to provide an audit trail records of actions taken by a user role. We have Amazon Cloud Trail logging, which supports the following with API calls, where you can track all the API requests made to Amazon Bedrock. You can monitor user actions with Amazon Bedrock, providing visibility into who's accessed the service and what changes were made. And lastly, all record modifications to Amazon Bedrock resources. So you can enable auditing and troubleshooting of any configurations that have been changed. Now transitioning into our last section of the customer use cases and the customer success story. Next slide, please. Going into the common use cases here we've seen on AWS in the finance industry. Starting off with the customer experience, you can improve the customer interactions and streamline the process. For example, the chatbots example that I talked about earlier with the virtual assistants, you can handle common customer inquiries and provide personalized recommendations and then route complex issues to the human agents. With personalization, you can tailor products and services to individual customers' needs and preferences. Then with text analysis, you can extract valuable insights from unstructured data sources like documents, social media, news, and any other data source that you have. With predictive analytics, you can leverage machine learning models to forecast trends, manage risks, and optimize decision making. And lastly, with fraud detection and prevention, you can identify and mitigate fraudulent activities using advanced analytics. An example of this is with credit fraud fraud detection that we see very common in the finance industry, where we can use those machine learning models and analyze transaction patterns, customer behavior, and other data points to flag suspicious activity or anomalies in real time. Now, diving deeper into the customer success story on the next slide, please, and how they leveraged AWS AI ML for market surveillance. So this customer is a leading global tech company serving corporate clients, investment managers, banks, brokers, and exchange operations as they navigate and interact with the global markets and other financial systems. So the problem that they had was that they needed to have a comprehensive surveillance system and controls to monitor and detect potential market abuse. However, the traditional process was very highly resource intensive and they had a lot of manual collation and analysis of extensive data from multiple different sources. And this customer was looking for a solution that enhances a process of investigating the market abuse, i.e. insider trading. So 
As a solution, they partnered with AWS to create a market surveillance solution that can analyze relevant information from multiple sources quickly, produce consolidated tables, and summarize key data points such as regulatory filings, company news, etc. Because of this, there was a 33% reduction in investigation time, so it enabled faster resolution of inquiries and improved the overall operational efficiency. And they were also able to more effectively detect potential market abuse, thereby gaining more trust and integrity with the global capital markets and their own customers. They also reduced infrastructure costs by only paying for the resources used and eliminating the need for using expensive on-prem hardware and maintenance that they had to do. They also improved monitoring and logging capabilities with Amazon CloudWatch and also AWS CloudTrail. So they were able to have a better visibility into their application, performance, and security events. And lastly, they simplified their infrastructure management and reduced the overall operational overhand by offloading different heavy lifting tasks to AWS, automating a lot of their infrastructure and allowing the organization to focus more on business values than the nitty gritty. And with that, that wraps up our presentation. Thank you for listening and passing it back in to Ron.